Black Friday 2019, and while everyone else in the country is out shopping for gifts, I'm out shopping for trains. Welcome back to the Sunshine State Rails. It is Black Friday weekend 2019, and this beautiful morning on Friday, we head over to Lakeland to find CSX train 0738 headed toward Auburndale with a Jeevo and an ST70AH. today has a few covered hoppers but mostly a load of rock for Davenport. Moving back to our favorite spot Plant City we find our CSX train 0709 working industries around Plant City currently taking the south leg of the Y here to go south on the Plant City subdivision to switch international paper. My friends in the cab today definitely know I'm here. for a train that we hear coming, but I'd like to take a look at this. Once upon a time, the old Lakeland Yard stood right here, but now the land is being cleared and modified for the new Bonnet Springs Park that will be going in here sometime within the next couple of years. I'm not exactly sure what this will look like by then or what kind of things they plan to put here, but they're already making fair progress, and though it does block part of the view from Lakeland Junction, it would be a nice background of scenery for trains that rail fans may catch going by here once the park is finished in the future. In some regards, it is sad to see the land being modified the way it is, but I am glad that the land is going toward the use of what it is rather than something else that would hurt the environment. Personally, I think that putting a large park here is a great idea, especially for the Lakeland area. For all I know, once this park is finished, I myself may set up on one of these hills to watch a train go by. No more time to waste though, because the train is here. Coming around the corner from the north is CSX K81124. Here's an empty phosphate train coming down from Cicero, Illinois, running back to the Bone Valley. And must I say, this is probably the longest phosphate train I've ever seen. I would be no person to doubt that this train was way over 10,000 feet. Partially because there's more phosphate headed in and out of the Bone Valley right now, and partially because this is two trains combined. K1125 and 24 were combined at Manchester, Georgia on their way down.
So once 811 got by us there, we moved back here, and 709 was done with all of his work everywhere except for Cherry, so he backed onto the A-line to head toward Cherry, which is what we're catching now. <laughs> Out of Tampa next was Q442 headed to Waycross, Georgia, but coming down from the north was K42326, a loaded ethanol train headed from Bensonville, Illinois to Tampa, but these two were on the S-line at the same time. And just like a previous video of mine, night siding was still blocked, so all the dispatcher could do was meet them in Plant City siding again. I didn't go to shoot this move again because I had already shot it once, but 423 was already waiting there as 442 came past. Finally, once 442 was out of his way, 423 was able to slowly get back up to speed coming out of Plant City siding and through downtown. After 423 gets by, we see a green signal for an eastbound train. We're in the middle of daylight savings, so it's way too early for most of the daily trains to be coming by, so we don't exactly know until we hear on the radio that it's 0704, an as-needed local which will run to Winston and back to carry certain merchandise such as rock and refrigerated goods back and forth. Coming out of Tampa headed to Winston today, he was only light engines, but the locomotive and trail definitely got some attention. That locomotive and trail was CEFX 1043, a leaser locomotive that came off of K42324 which came in on Thanksgiving Day and they are using the power for 0704 today. After 704 got to Winston, something was about to happen in Plant City that was pretty rare. Well, I shouldn't say rare because it's not rare at all for Amtrak to be late. But Amtrak 91 today was running five hours late. And because of that, coming through Plant City, Amtrak 92 was right on the tail of 91 coming into Tampa. So rail fanning Plant City today you'd have seen two Amtraks within 20 minutes of each other.
decision was then made to run Amtrak 91 out of Tampa first, then run Q046, the daily intermodal, out behind him, then 92 behind 046. train for Black Friday would be the return of 0704 with the CEFX and trail. What I found a tad weird about this job was that they sent those two big GEs out to Winston to pick up only nine cars of refrigerated stuff. These must have been some high priority foods or there must have been no other power available. <laughs> Next day on Saturday, November 30th, we're back out, and our first train of the morning is our seasonal auto rack train, Q213, hauling almost a hundred auto racks to Tampa today. <laughs> By this time at 10 o'clock a.m., 0709 was already done with all of his work here and was already headed to do his final work at Cherry. decide to come out on a whole separate day for? Well, this train right here, K42127, running this time from Garrett, Indiana to Tampa, Florida, with ethanol loads, had two Canadian National SD75I locomotives leading and a CSX AC4400 in the trail. And let me tell you, there was quite the bunch of people out for this train today, all along the S line.
Last one was 91. Amtrak 91 headed from New York to Miami. We weren't out for long today, so we were only going out for the two CNs, but we did get Amtrak before we headed home. But it was a great weekend out here on the S line in Plant City and Lakeland, as well as the A line. I'd also like to thank Tommy, Dalton, DJ, and a ton of other rail fans for coming out and meeting up with me on these couple of days. I had a ton of fun with everybody, and I can't wait until our next outing. Also, Dalton, thanks for the $10. So in Plant City, this is Coda Beaner, and I'll see everybody next time on the Sunshine State Rails.